church. And uh, good morning to any of you that are joining us online as well. We're glad that you're with us this morning. And uh, anybody that braved the icy roads this morning, praise the Lord, you made it here safe. So uh, we just want to uh, enter into worship this morning. And even on uh, the craziest of days, we can enter into his presence with joy because of the price that Jesus paid for us. We can come close to God and we can enter into worship with nothing that separates us from him because of the price of Jesus. So we're just so thankful for that this morning. Lord Jesus, we worship you. We're um, excited to be in worship this morning. I invite you, Holy Spirit, to come and have your way this morning. And I pray that you would um, open our hearts, open our, um, our hearts to be able to receive what you have for us this morning. In Jesus' name we pray. glorify you, Lord, this morning. May you be glorified and lifted up, Lord Jesus. We're singing all the precious is the flow that makes me one as no one of the fount I know. I am washed, I am washed, I am drenched in love. We magnify you, Lord, may you glorify you. You are worthy, Lord God. Just prepare our hearts to worship and sing to Him. All souls atoned by the blood of the Lamb. I'm not a slave to what once held me down. How beautiful this cleansing flood. I am washed, I am washed, I am drenched in love. Sing, oh precious. Sing, oh Precious is the flow that makes me white as snow. Oh, no, all of the clouds I know. I am washed, I am washed, I am drenched in love. Sing, whoa, sing, and whoa.
lost my Lord and now I'm raised to life forevermore. My name's been carved upon your heart. No, not death, no, not hell will ever rip us apart. We're singing, oh, precious is the flow that makes me white as snow. Oh, no other fountain, no. I am washed, I am washed, I am drenched in love. Singing, oh, precious is the flow that makes me white as snow. I am washed, I am drenched in love. I am washed, I am washed, I am drenched in love. I am washed, I am washed, I am drenched in love. We magnify you, Lord. We glorify your name, Lord. You are worthy of our praise, Lord. Let's sing that chorus one more time. We're singing, oh, precious is the flow that makes me wise. I am washed, I am washed, I am drenched in love. Be glorified, Lord. May you be lifted up. You're worthy of all praise, Lord Jesus. You're worthy. So free, caught in your love for me. 
hold it all together God of my present God of my future you write my story you hold it all together
we ask for your perspective, even to see the ways that your goodness has preserved us, has met us in seasons where we didn't know that you were there, that you were there. We can look forward to you doing that again, God. That's who you are. That's who you are, God. Thank you, Holy Spirit, just for meeting us this morning in a new way with your presence. Thank you, God. We just invite you to continue to to meet us this morning, God. We need more of you. We don't have anything uh, apart from you. We need to stay connected to you. Thank you for the vision that you've given the leaders of this church, God. I pray you'd open our eyes and open our hearts to receive that this morning, God. Ask this in your name. Amen. Amen. Thank you again for being with us this morning. Um, please feel free to welcome your neighbor. Give him a high five, an elbow bump. Uh, say hello for a few minutes. Good morning. Good morning. Can you hear me? Hello. <laughs> uh, I'm so glad you guys are here today. Um, you braved the the icy streets and we're here or we're online and I'm just thankful for everybody who's joining us today. Um, we want to let you guys know that there are several ways that we can intercede and in prayer for your needs, um, whether it is through our app or through email at hopechurchmidway at gmail.com. And just definitely talk to us in person or over the phone. There's always an opportunity for our prayer team, for us as leaders, to be able to be there with you through the highs and the lows of what you're experiencing. And we want to do that. So please let us know of what's going on. Um, we also want to let you know for giving, we're so thankful that we have these give boxes in the back. For those that are in person, you can give through the slots on the give box um, by, near the entrances. But you can also give via the app or online as well as drop it off right through the door. So <laughs> we love you guys. And we're so thankful for really what we're going to do in 2022 because of your faithfulness and your giving. Um, we, I wanted to point out a few things because we talk about the YouVersion app quite a bit uh, of like, hey, you guys can follow along with the service through YouVersion. You can uh, take notes. You can do all these things. And so some of you might not have been utilizing that. Um, it's the same notes that go through the app. But the way you do that is you download the YouVersion app. Um, and then once you do that and you sign in, you're going to go down to make sure your locations is on. You're going to go to the bottom right of your screen to where it says more. And once you click on more, you're going to search events. And once you click on events, one of the main things that you'll see, hopefully at the top, if you're in the building here, is Hope Church Midway. Um, if you're trying to participate in service from out of state or in a different city, you might want to search Hope Church Midway, um, Chicago, Illinois, and then th that way you'll find us. But this is a great opportunity not just to be able to keep up with activities and events that are happening, but also I think it's really important, like if you find notes are helpful, to be able to take notes and save those because in the top right corner there's a save button, and that way you can always refer back to them. And that's one of the ways that you can continue to connect with us throughout the week. We wanted to let you know that we are resuming midweek, though, this Wednesday. So we're switching from Tuesday nights to Wednesdays, starting this Wednesday, which is January 12th. And we're going to start it out with prayer because it's a big thing for us. Prayer is a foundation of what we believe 
of how we can communicate with the Lord. And so it's important for us to be able to do that as a congregation and just really pray in this new year and what the vision that we'll hear later on today of what God wants to do in this church and community and for the needs that you guys might have. So join us this Wednesday at 7, and then we'll roll out into midweek discipleship after that. Um, being that said, one of the things that we're preparing for on Wednesday nights is preparing for Awanas, which is the kids program. And that's going to be launching on January. January 26th. So this coming Wednesday will be one of our training sessions for the volunteers that have um, said that they want to invest in, in our kiddos in this community and in this church. So please let us know if you haven't already spoken to Graciela Garcia, our children's director, please let her know um, if you would like to um, participate, if you'd like to be involved in some fashion, and she can let you know where the needs are and you can uh, be a part of the trainings uh, the next couple Wednesdays before we launch. Um, we also want to let you know that uh, 6 p.m. on Sunday nights, including tonight, um, we have Hope Youth at the LaGrange campus. And tonight, our very own youth leader, Mark Sukadum. Oh, gosh, did I pronounce that right? Uh, he is speaking tonight. So you don't want to miss it. If you guys, if your students need a ride, woo! If your students need a ride to there, to the LaGrange campus, we're going to meet at the church at 5.30 and then we'll bring them over there. So please let Pastor JJ know if your students need a lift. And uh, we would love to do that. Because just as much as we invest in our adults and our children, we invest in our students too. Thank you. Right on. Thanks. Thanks, Jen. <laughs> um, also, for those of you who would like, um, feel free to grab a shirt at the end. Uh, we got the shirts for everybody last week. Um, we wanted to say a, a great way of um, letting you know that you are the church, uh, not just that you're going to, you know, have some kind of advertisement on you, uh, but it's a great way for you to remember that you are the church, that it's not a building, but it's people, and hey, they look nice too, so uh, feel free to grab one at the end, uh, but let's pray. God, we thank you so much for this day. We thank you for those who came out here, God, in the ice and everything else like that, God, but still came here knowing the importance of coming together, God, and knowing what you do when we're in your midst, God, and, and what happens when we come together, God, in this special time of how you meet us, and we're grateful for that. We pray right now that you will speak to our lives, God, speak to our hearts. We're so grateful for all that you're doing in Jesus Christ's name, amen. Well, today we're going to talk a little bit on a second part of something that we started last week. Last week, we talked about ordination of the ordinary. Um, now, how many of you guys have ever had a little kid, I'm talking little kid, try to tell you a story before? Anybody ever seen that? So what normally happens when a little kid tries to tell you the story, they're very good on talking about the characters, and they like want to explain about all the characters because that's what they really think about, but they don't really know the plot, and you're trying to follow the plot from a little kid, and you're like, I have no idea where you're going on anything, and you're trying to you know, follow that, that map, all right? Anybody ever dealt with that? Okay. So you've talked to a little kid, you know, and so, I mean, it's, it's very interesting to do that. I mean, I even do that um, with my kids when they were very little, and I'd ask them to tell me, like, different Bible stories or something like that, and they would talk about the characters. I'm like, and then what, what happened, you know? Um, you know, but it was always hard to say that, and a lot of times, church can feel that way, where we talk about our character, but we don't talk about the plot, and we we'll talk about what we're actually supposed to be doing, you know, and so we don't want to go into this whole idea of saying our, our theme for this year is ordination of the ordinary, which means that God has called us to be priests. And if you missed that last week, feel free to look on YouTube, Facebook, whatever. It's a good sermon to look at. Um, but, it, you know, so that's the character. God has called us to be priests, to reach out um, within our communities, within our circle of influence, within our church. He's called us to do that. But what does that mean? What does the plot look like? And that's what we're going to look at today. So we're looking at for the vision for this year, you know, I'm praying. I said, well, God, what do you want us to go? Where, what's the direction you want us to do? And we know this is the overall theme for this year. Again, that's the character we want. It's going to have that ordination process. But what does that look like in vision? And God brought me to one of Jesus' last prayers for his vision of the church. And so we're going to turn right now to John 17. If you want to look at John chapter 17, you can look in your Bibles, look in your phones, look up here. Either way, let's look at that. Um, starting in verse 1, this is Jesus' prayer. This is right before he's about to go to the garden, before the crucifixion, so you kind of know a timeline where he's at. All right, it says, After saying all these things, Jesus looked up to heaven and said, Father, the hour has come. Glorify your Son so he can give glory back to you. For you have given him authority over everyone. He gives eternal life to each one you have given him. And this is the way to have eternal life, to know you 
the only true God, and Jesus Christ, the one you sent. I brought glory to you here on earth by completing the work you gave me to do. Now, Father, bring me into the glory we shared before the world began. Now, I said this is Jesus' prayer for the church, but it kind of seems like he's only talking about himself right here. But it's important. He's laying down a great foundation for this prayer that we must know God. We must know God. It's like this is the importance of why I came so they could fully know who he is. Let's continue on. Verse 6. I revealed you to the ones you've given me from, uh, gave, you have gave me from this world. You, they were always yours. You gave them to me, and they have kept your word. Now they know that everything I have is a gift from you, for I have passed on to them the message you gave me. They accepted it and know that I came from you, and they believe you have sent me. So what is this whole thing talking about. When he says, I have revealed you, when Jesus said this, this this word here, this phrase here in Greek means I have made clear. I've allowed everybody to understand who God is. And and the idea of him saying you, that was mean God's name. And and a person's name in the Bible means a reputation of who they are, um, you know, the essence of everything they are, their character. So if you've ever wanted to see who God is fully, we look at Jesus. Jesus is a representation for us to be able to know who God is fully. So it's an important part. So Jesus starts his prayer by, by stating his plot of why he came. Why he come? Well, Jesus came to reveal who God is and rescue us to be able to live our plot. So Jesus came and he says, I want to un- let everybody understand who God is for themselves to be able to reveal that, but he also wanted us to be able to reveal the, the living and the purposes and the plot for our life. That was part of his purpose. That was part of why he came. And part of that is that relationship between God and man, and that's why he's talking about here. He says this is a whole part for God to have that understanding of, of who we are, that we can have that relationship with him, and that will help us with our relationships with each other as well. In fact, Jesus would also say that the entire law and the prophets, the entire Bible is about loving God and loving others. And so this is the things that Jesus was showing of why he came and what he's talking about here, the first part of this prayer. So what is our first part of our plot moving forward? The first part is exactly what he's saying here is to love God. And to love God, we must learn about God. Now, I know that sounds simplistic. (laughs) You know, to love God, you got to learn about him. But that's a whole part of what Jesus is saying here at the very beginning. He says, look, I revealed them to you. I allowed them to understand who you are. Without that revelation of God in our lives, we're just going to be following tradition. Or we're just going to be following something that just seems nice at the time or, or something that can help us out when we're feeling bad or something like that. But when we, the more and more we know about God, the more we're going to love him. You know, it's, it's important to see that this is, this is a lifelong thing. It's a lifelong learning. It's kind of like a healthy marriage. Now, we've all seen dysfunctional marriages, but a healthy marriage, you want to continue to get to know a person over that time and continue to know all the different nuances and different things that happen as they go throughout their life. You continue to have this lifelong learning together. Jen and I actually uh, celebrated 22 years of knowing each other yesterday, actually. So uh, it's really easy to remember because it was on the year 2000, so it's really easy to remember the year. Uh, so <laughs> makes it simple. Um, you know, but, but when we first met each other, uh, you know, she came, and it's a long story, and I'm not going to get into it. Uh, <laughs> some of you guys have heard that story, and it goes on forever. Uh, but, you know, when we first met each other, she came in. I was working as a, uh, as assistant manager at a clothing store in the mall, because college. And, uh, and so I was working there. Her roommate bought her the wrong size shirt on purpose, so that she would come in, and that she would, uh, like, say, try to trade it in, and she could strike up a conversation. And Jen doesn't know how to flirt, because that's not Jen. Uh, she doesn't know how to flirt, so she was trying to flirt. I thought she was 15. I was 21. I was like, you? Uh, so <laughs> I literally, I'm not even kidding. I carded her. I literally carded her because I did not believe how old she was. And uh, Filipinos, you know, you're not getting uh, So, but anyway, so, I, you know, I carded her and everything. I was like, no way. Uh, but that whole entire time when we first met, I never thought, like, that anything was ever going to happen after that. Neither one of us did. You know, she was just interested to kind of talk to me. Her roommate, you know, worked across from me and was just like, hey, here you go. You know, whatever. And we didn't know anything that was going to happen. And a lot of times that happens when we first come to know God. We say, hey, well, all right, this sounds like a great thing. All right, let's, let's see how this works. But we should never just end on this the meeting stage. If you're just to be in the meeting stage, nothing's ever going to go deeper. You're never going to have a real relationship. And there's so many people that have just met God. They've had that interaction. Well, somebody brought me over and said, hey, this is something you should see. And I went, oh, this is cool. I'll give it a a shot. This is great. You know, and a lot of us just stay in that meeting stage. 
You know, but we want to go deeper. And as a church, we're praying that we go even deeper this year than we ever have before. And so we have a lot of different opportunities to have that part of going deeper, of getting to know him. Because the Bible actually talks about a healthy marriage as a metaphor. I love this. In Isaiah 54, 5, it says this. For your creator will be your husband. The Lord of heaven's armies is his name. He is your redeemer, the holy one of Israel, the God of all the earth. Do we realize who we're following? Because we're just staying at that meeting stage of just, oh, it's great. It's good to have that relationship. And we don't understand this. I mean, look at who we're following. The Lord of heaven's armies, the one who is in charge of everything. You know, I mean, that's, that's a big thing that we should be able to understand what that means. I mean, would we ever have fear if we realize we're following the Lord of heaven's armies and that he is the redeemer? He paid his life to allow us to have a life, to forgive us of our sins, for helping us to be able to move forward. We don't have to live in sin and shame. That's something we get to learn every single day, that we get to have that opportunity. The Holy One, he is set apart. There is no one like him. There is nothing like him. It's not just another religion. There's another book. It is totally different from anything else, and he's the God of all all the earth, and he wants to know you personally. It's like, I want to have that personal relationship. He knows everything about us, yet he still wants to know us. That's amazing. There's a lot of people, you start to get to know them, and they're like, eh, you know. <laughs> you know, but that's the difference. He knows everything already and says, yeah, I still want to jump into this relationship because I care for you, I love you, I died for you, and I rose again for you. This is why we want to get in that deeper relationship more than we ever have before. And I'm so excited for how many people have come to know God, and, and we're excited about that, and we're going to continue to pray that people will continue to know God throughout this next year as well. But a big emphasis we want to do is everyone going deeper together, to knowing who God is together, to having that time, to learning to love God more. And so we're going to do a lot of different things. We're asking people, obviously, to continue what they hopefully should be doing. And if you haven't started this, I want to encourage you, read at least one chapter of the Bible a day. You know, I know some people are like, you know, I'm going to read a book a day. And they're like, no, that's crazy. You know, <laughs> I'm not going to read Genesis in one day and actually get anything from it. You know, but actually read, really look through it. You know, there's some times that you'll read just one chapter. It might just be a small one, like a psalm or something like that. But you can get so much out of it. You know, when you're not just trying to speed things through and you're actually learning about it, you're not just checking off things. Because again, it's not just meeting somebody, it's getting to know somebody. Just having that time with them. You know, and I, I pray that also this year, your prayer life gets to a deeper level as well. That as you're reading the word, that you're starting to say, well, God, what does this mean in my life? And how can I pray for this for myself? How can I pray for this for others? How can I pray for this for the circle of influence you've given me? You know, we're, we're launching up Wednesdays again. You know, well, I shouldn't say again because we are doing Tuesdays before. You know, but we're launching Wednesdays and we start off with a prayer meeting. And I'm like, we're going to start off with a prayer meeting, which is typically the lowest attended thing that happens. I'm just being honest, okay? We want that to change. This is not, you know, a guilt on you guys or a guilt on anybody watching or anything else like that. The ice will be gone by then. You know, but, you know, it's not a guilt thing. It's a thing of saying, look, we want to go deeper. This isn't just I met somebody. It's I want to go deeper in this relationship. I want to go deeper in this love. I want to go deeper in this time together. And we're going to be here. We're going to meet upstairs. And I know that some people are going to be downstairs helping out on Graciela while they're learning. And so that's great. If you're downstairs, I'm not going to be like, you're not holy enough. No, no, you're doing a great thing. So <laughs> don't think I'm, I'm knocking if I don't see you up here. You know, but I want to encourage us to come together and have that time of prayer. I mean, if we can't give God one hour who he gave us his entire life, eh. you know, but I'm just saying it's, it's a big thing. And a lot of times, and, and I hate to say it like this, a lot of times we look at, at these times as just so optional. You know, and it is optional. It's not like I'm taking attendance on you and I'm like, okay, did, did Tobin get here? Did, you know, I'm, I'm not doing these kinds of things. You know, but for us, it shouldn't be something that someone has to tell you to do. It should be like, I get to do this. That's awesome. That's awesome that I get to come together with other people and pray together. That we get to, cut, get to come together. And, and you're going to see, for those of you who come on Wednesdays, we learn from each other on Wednesdays. You know, it's not just me talking the whole time. We get to learn from one another. And you might be here saying, well, I don't know that much about the Bible. You have great life experience that can help out to speaking to this. And other people who do know the Bible really well, you can help to speak into this too. We help each other out during this. You know, and that's the beauty of it, you know, is that we want to come together to have this deeper understanding because the Bible was always meant to be shared together. It was always written to be shared as a group. I mean, God does great things individually every single day in our lives, and I want us to do that every single day, but it was meant to be read corporately, you know? And so that's an important thing for us to look at, and so we're going to encourage you for that. 
We're also going to be having different stuff, and I'll be talking about this at the very end, where we're having people come together with uh, DNA of a disciple. And again, we'll talk about that later. But you see, if we're doing all these things throughout the week, think about it. If we're reading our word every day, if we're praying every day, if we're having these times together where God is really speaking into us through his word and we're speaking to each other, on Sunday is a celebration day. A celebration, we come together and like, man, this is awesome. God's been doing all this stuff this week. And even if, I've had, even if we've had a hard week, we can say, oh man, it's great that we get to come together again. See, that's what Sunday should be. Sunday should not be the only time that we get a meal a week. No, it's a celebration of it. The celebration of coming together. The celebration of having that time. You know, when Jen and I, like I said, we celebrated last night. We went on a date because, you know, that's, that's a fun thing. You know, and, and when we went on the date, it was like, yeah, this is a fun thing. I didn't feel like I had to do it. You know, like, oh, man, what we got to do is an anniversary. So we shouldn't ever feel that way when it comes to getting to know God and having times to come in his presence. It should be things that we're saying we are grateful we're, we're able to do that. So our plot starts off with loving and learning about God. But then what happens? Let's go back again to John 17, verse 9. It says, My prayer is not for the world, but for those you have given me, because they belong to you. All who are mine belong to you, and you have given them to me, so they bring me glory. Now I am departing from this world. They are staying in this world, but I am coming to you. Holy Father, you have given me your name. Now protect them by the power of your name, so they'll be united just as we are. During my time here, I protected them by the power of the name that you gave me. I guarded them so that none was lost except for the one headed for destruction, as scriptures foretold. You might be saying, well, why do we need protection? Why is Jesus praying for protection over us? It's because of the next part of the plot, verse 13. Now I am coming to you. I've told them many things while I was with them in this world, so they would be filled with joy. I've given them your word, and the world hates them because they do not belong to the world just as I do not belong to the world. I'm not asking you to take them out of the world, but to keep them safe from the evil one. They do not belong to this world any more than I do. Make them holy by your truth. Teach them your word, which is truth. Just as you sent me into the world, I am sending them into the world. So there's a lot that goes here, and I understand this, and this is one of those things, please reread this during the week. There's so much in here. But when we're looking at this, we see, okay, so... God's word brings us joy, yet we're living in a world that hates us, but we're sent out to that very world that hates us, and somehow we're supposed to be joyful within this? Y'all see that there seems to be a lot of contradictions here, right? I mean, it seems to be a kind of a confusing thing when we look at this. Now, what is it, first of all, what does it mean by the world? It's society that's corrupted by Satan. That's what it means by the world. Whenever you're reading that in the Bible, it's society that's corrupted by Satan. The world, not as it was meant to be, but as it's being driven, driven towards um, by sin and by all the things that we've seen around us. And so we're going to be hated by this world. So we're supposed to love God and find this joy. But why are we doing this? What, what happens to this? Well, because the next part of the plot is hard. We need to find the joy in here, and we need to learn to love God more because we must live with and love on others. We must live with and love on others. Now, what do I mean by, by live with? Well, typically, there's a couple of different ways that Christians normally respond to the world. Normally, it's, it's a couple of things that happen. If you have notes, please write this down. This is important to know. Um, so the first part we see that people respond is they will try to keep out of the world. They're saying, all right, I see the sin that's going on around me, and I'm going to isolate myself as much as humanly possible. We have a great example of that even in Illinois. If you were to go up north towards uh, Wisconsin, there's a place called Zion. And I'm not knocking a town. I'm just saying what happened with it. Um, but there's a bunch of people that came together and said, wouldn't it be great if we had Christian businesses and Christian neighbors and everything else like that? Wouldn't that just be the greatest world that we can ever have? Like, let's do this. Let's build a whole town and let's have that. You know? And so they said, no, let's have Christian businesses and Christian neighbors and everything else, and that's going to be great. And that's what we want because the rest of the world just kind of sucks. So <laughs> let's all come together and that'll be great. The problem is that's not what Jesus prayed for us to do. Not at all. We're never meant to make a commune or our own city. What it comes, when it comes to, and, and, and again, all, who wouldn't want a bunch of Christian neighbors and a bunch of other, who wouldn't want that? Well, we get that in heaven, okay? <laughs> That's what happens in heaven. But we're called here to the world before we go to heaven. Why? Because God wants them to go to heaven. You know, so that's an important thing. So we're not just saying, hey, well, I'm just going to keep out of that and I'm just going to stay to myself. No, we need to go in. That's what Jesus actually specifically said. The other ways that we react to the world is we'll speak out. So we either keep out or we'll speak out. 
What do I mean by, by speak out? We're going to point out every single thing that the world does is wrong. And we're going to shame the living snot out of them. Right? And this is what the Pharisees were really good at. They were good at telling, these are the religious leaders in Jesus' day. They were really good at telling everybody all the wrong they were doing. They weren't helping out anybody. In fact, they were making it even worse for people to come to know God. They were just making it worse and worse by putting all this shame and all this blame and everything else on them so that nobody ever could even feel they could even go into the temple. In fact, that's what the Pharisees started to do. They started saying, well, you know what? There's certain people that can't go in here and there's certain people that can't. Now, I usually bring this up every single Christmas. The shepherds that Jesus went to were not allowed into the temple because they didn't trust them. Because they kept on speaking out about them. Well, we don't trust them. And when they're in town, things start to disappear. So we just blame the shepherds. There were certain people they were keeping out because they kept on speaking out. You wonder why a lot of people don't want to come into the church because the church has been speaking out instead of reaching out. And so all they think is about what we're against, not what we're for. And God is for everyone. His love is for everyone. Does he want everybody to live in the same sinful lifestyle? No. He saved us from our sinful lifestyles. And he's helping us to change in our lives. And he wants to help them because he loves them too much to stay where they're at. And that's a great thing for them to be able to know that. But if we're always just speaking out and never reaching out, then there is a problem. The other thing that we'll see happens a lot of times in churches that we'll cop out. So we'll keep out We'll speak out or we'll cop out. What I mean by cop out will be totally apathetic. I'm not getting involved. I'm not going to get involved at all. I see that there's issues. I see that there's stuff that's happening. It's not my problem. It's not, it's not my issue. You know, uh, the things that are happening in our city, the things that are happening in my neighborhood, the things that are happening. You know what? Somebody else will take care of that. I'm going to take care of myself, my family, my whatever, and I'm just going to stay in my own little area. And we don't get involved in anything. That's somebody else's job. Well, that's the pastor's job, or that's, you know, something that they need to do. Whatever. We'll all have these kind of mentalities, and it's the worst thing. You know, one of the greatest things I got to see growing up, and, and I realized as I've, as I've gotten older that I was really blessed to be in a very healthy church growing up, because I thought all churches worked like that. They really don't. Um, but I was very, very blessed to be in a very healthy church. And one of the things that I saw at our church did is when they heard that they had about the kids and youth and everything else like that, they would go to their apartment complexes, they'd go in their neighborhoods, and they would say, okay, well, these kids kind of seem a little crazy. Instead of just complaining about it, I'm going to have them come to church. They're going to know who Jesus is, and that can help to change their life. And we saw that happen often. In fact, that's actually, um, when I was a youth pastor, that's how we grew our youth group really well. We would talk to different parents. They'd say, oh, man, this kid is crazy, and blah, blah, blah. I'm like, have them come to youth group. So we had all the crazy kids. It was awesome. And they came to know God, and, they, and God really changed their lives. The parents got to see it, and the parents came, and they're like, what's going on? And we're like, well, because God's doing this great thing in their life, and they want to know about God, and they kind of know who God is. Look at that. But how many times does the church just cop out? Oh, that, that's a horrible kid. I can't, they, they need to learn how to parent more. Really? It's not what we were ever called to do. We're not called to cop out. We're called to reach out. Then the other part that we see that the church does a lot of times, they will sell out. They'll sell out. Well, we're going to act as much like the world as possible so we can want, make the world want to come to see us, all right? We're going to act exactly like them, and then that way they'll come and want to hang out with us. You know, we see this a lot, you know, when people will never share any kind of truth. They'll only share, like, one verse, and then it'll all be, like, topical type things. And it'll be, like, two verses that are being shared, then we're going to want to talk about marriage, or we want to talk about, and it's like, you're not even sharing real truth. You're saying one thing, then you're talking about a bunch of, you know, armchair philosophy or, you know, psychology. Everybody turns into Dr. Phil in a pulpit, you know, and there's not really any truth that's being shared. No one's really even talking on this. And so it's just selling out. Well, if everybody just feels good, then at least they're in church or at least they're involved in a small group or at least they're doing, it's like, no, no, no. It's share the truth in love. We're loving, we're caring about them, but the truth has to be there. If the truth's not there, what are we doing? We're a social club. We're never called to be that. We're called to be a church. Again, we're named to be priests, but our plot is to reach out, to reach out in truth and love. We said this last week, we're called to be priests and not social workers. That's a very big thing. It's a very big importance to it. People need to see it. That doesn't mean that we come around and we're going to shove a Bible in someone's face every five seconds. No, you need to get to know different people. That's what Jesus did. He got to hang out with different people. He got to know them, and then they got to see who Jesus was. And he didn't come out there right away and say, hey, let me preach to you right before we start this meal. No, he had the meal with them. They got to know him. Then they were the one asking the questions. See, that's the beautiful thing about it. For reaching out, it's not pushing ourselves into someone's face. It's having that time where we're getting to know people, loving on people, but we have to live with them. And that's the important part of what we said there. We must live with and love on others. 
We can't be by ourselves. We can't isolate. We can't just say, hey, well, they're going you know, so far down here. Or we can't just speak out of something. We can't just be apathetic on something. We can't just try to pretend that there is not truth to be shared. We have to say, God, how can I reach out in a real way? How can I reach out? How can I allow them to see who you are and see the greatness of who you are? It's a big part of our plot. And so you're going to see that a lot more this year. We're going to have different opportunities to reach out more and more. The last two years, I've been very happy and very proud of our church of how much we've done more and more in the community every single year. We've been doing more every single year, and we're not taking our foot off the gas. You know, we want to continue to move forward. Why? Because people need to hear who Jesus is. That was his prayer. It's like this world is going down, and I'm not just leaving it saying, hey, well, I helped those ones that you gave to me. He's like, no, no, I'm leaving them in the world so they can reach the world. That's the point. I want them to reach out, to allow other people to know. And we're going to do whatever we can to allow people to know the truth and do it in a loving way. So you're going to see a lot of that this next year. So you might be saying, but how are we going to be able to live in a world and love in a world and do it with joy, as Jesus said, if we're hated by the world? I mean, this is a big part because I think it's really easy when we do visions, casting sermons and Sundays and stuff for people to be like, all right, we're all hyped about something and totally ignoring the reality of our daily lives. You know, I think it's very easy for us to do. You know, and say, oh, these are the things we're going to do. All right, we're going to do. But you know what? I'm dealing with all this stuff. Because you know what? If you're hated by the world, you're going to be feeling it. You're going to feel it. You know? And I know some of you, we've talked to you feeling it on your jobs. You're feeling it from different family. I mean, you're feeling it from different places. Where you're just feeling this hatred that's coming down. You're like, man, this is so hard. And, and everything is so difficult. Well, I want us to look at a psalm today. Psalm 73. And I want to encourage you. I told this to Jan. I'm going to do a sermon on this some other time. This is so amazing. But please, please, please read this on your own. It's one of the most honest psalms. I love this psalm. It's one of my favorites. Uh, but this really helps to explain different people's lives as we're living in the world and, and kind of how this world affects us. So Psalm 73, I'm just giving you a couple of highlights through it. It says, truly God is good to Israel, to those whose hearts are pure. So it sounds off good. Yeah, we know God is good. But then it continues. But as for me, I almost lost my footing. My feet were slipping, and I was almost gone. For I envied the proud when I saw them prosper despite their wickedness. They seem to live in such painless lives. Their bodies are so healthy and strong. They don't have troubles like other people. They're not plagued with problems like everyone else. See, oftentimes we don't love on the world because we envy the world. You know, well, yeah, I got, my, I got all these issues that I'm dealing with. It seems like everybody else around me is doing great. So how am I going to be able to, to love on them? Well, it's important to understand. It's superficial to ignore the supernatural. If you're only concentrating on what you see day in and day out and ignoring someone's eternity, you're missing the whole part of who they are. You know, I've said this constantly to, to different people. I, I say you don't know if you truly love somebody unless you care about their eternity. That's how you know you truly love somebody. Because you just love them for right now, and hey, I just want to be around them, and everything's going to be cool with us right now. If that's it, then you're loving them just for the immediate. But if you truly love somebody, you're going to care about their eternity. You're going to care about their entire soul. And why? Not just because we want them to go to heaven, but we want them to have a relationship with God at all times. We want them to start it here, and we care about someone. We care about them fully. But again, here in Psalm 73, he does exactly what a lot of us do often. As we just look at what's happening right around us, we're just looking at the immediate, and that's what we're focusing on. We're not focusing on going even deeper. Other times, we can get caught up in our own issues. Verse 13, so honest. It said, did I keep my heart pure for nothing? Did I keep myself innocent for no reason? I get nothing but trouble all day long. Every morning brings me pain. If I had really spoken this way to others, I would have been a traitor to your people. Love this psalm. Like I said, I could preach about this literally all day. But I mean, think about this. How many people have, have felt this way? And you don't have to raise your hands. <laughs> you know? But I mean, how many of us have felt that way? And you're waking up and you're like, God, I've been following you for so long. I've been dealing with this prayer request for so long. I've been dealing with this, this hurt, this loneliness, this ache, this whatever it may be. Fill in the blank that you've been praying for. I've been dealing with this for so long. Has all this been in vain? Because you know what? I see other people and everybody else seems to be doing good. But if I bring that up in church, everybody's going to think I'm really bad. So I love it. He's like, I would have been a traitor if I actually said, and I love that this is in the song. It's like, look, this is his heart, and this is a lot of our hearts too. Have I done all this? Have I been following God in vain? Have I been doing all this stuff? Because we can bring up a vision Sunday and say, hey, let's be all hyped about it. And you're like, yeah, loving God, loving others, and how we're going to, 
but what is it going to mean? Because every day I know what my reality is. And that's why, again, I love the honesty that's here. It's important for us to look into it and to be real and honest about it too. So you say, what can help this person to want to live with and love on others? What actually helps them? Verse 17. Then I went into your sanctuary, O God, and I finally understood the destiny of the wicked. Then I went to church. See, this are our daily lives. It's not escaping that, that we deal with a lot of the, the hatred and the hurt and everything else that comes from the world, our own mindset, wanting to mess with us, all these other things that, that start to come into us. That is a daily life. We're going to be battling that for the rest of our lives until Jesus comes or we die. We're going to be dealing with that. But it's great to say that God has created a thing called his church to help us, to help to strengthen us. He says, then I came to church and I got that understanding by looking to his word that, look, I'm, I was just looking at the superficial. I wasn't looking at the supernatural. And so I was judging people in, in the wrong way. And, and then he looks at it and goes, man, and then I looked at my own heart and continue to read 73. It's awesome. You know, and he says, then I was looking at my own heart and, and then you really started to expose the things that were there that I need to get changed in myself because I was worrying about all these little things and, and not really looking at all the great things that you've given me. I mean, we had an awesome time of, of praise and worship and talking about the love of God. And how many times does that help us we need that. We need that desperately, that time of just remembering who God is as we come together in his church. We need to have that time when we come together. He also says, he, he talks about here again in 73, about God's love, remembering that and what that means. So he sees others, he sees himself, and he sees God, and it changes his perspective. It goes for him saying, man, I've been battling the world for so long to saying, wow, this is what God's word, this is what his praise, this is what this does to my life. That's the encouraging thing I want to see us this next year as well as we're living with and loving others is we don't do it on our own. And we don't do it from far away. I am grateful that we have the medium that we are able to share online to be able to share the sermons for people like that can't come out because they're ill or people who are home, homebound or people that even live in other states. Like we know different people who watch. There are people who have come to this church because they saw us online, which is awesome. You know, so we are very grateful for that. But God says he wants us to come together. There's nothing going around that. There's nothing that can change that. Again, I'm grateful for what we can do there. But for those who can, we need to come together. Why? Because if we're going to be learning about God and loving on others, the battle we're going to have from the world gets helped here. We celebrate on Sundays when we come together, but it's also a healing time during the celebration. As God heals us from the wounds that we have throughout the week. You know, and that's an important thing for us to look at. And so we want to encourage people. Again, that's why we're really emphasizing midweek too. So we have a different time as well. So there's multiple times that we can learn, that we can love, and we can find that healing through God's word and through worship that God can help us to bring this in there. So it brings us to the last plot point. Let's go back to John 17, verse 20. It says, I am praying not only for these disciples, but also for all those who will ever believe in me through their message. This is all of us. I pray that they will all be one, just as you and I are one, as you are in me, Father, and I am in you. And may they be in us so that the world will believe you have sent me. I've given them the glory you gave me so that they may be one as we are one. I am in them and they, and you are in me. May they experience such perfect unity that the world will know that you have sent me, that you love them as much as you love me. So the last part we see here is Unity. What does he mean by unity? That's discipleship. That we all come together with the same mind, the same heart, the same goal. That's discipleship. That's what it means to be a disciple. Now, an important thing about unity that I love, and I've, I heard this um, from somebody else. I didn't come up with it, but I like it. But unity is not uniformity. And that's important to know. We all have different backgrounds. We have different views on different social things, on political things, everything else like that. That's okay. What he's called us to be unified in his word, unified in purpose, unified in his vision for what he's wanting us to do. That's what he's called us to be unified in. It's kind of like a family. In our families, we all have different people who have different views, have different personalities and everything else like that, but you're a family. Again, just like we said, healthy marriage, also healthy family. <laughs> so, but in a healthy family, people come together, even though they're all very different in their personalities, but you come together with that knowing that you're family and you're moving together. And that's what God wants us to do. So we're called his family. 
This is your church family, and we're all different, and that's great, but we need to be unified. And so we said, well, how can we get ourselves to be more unified? How can we do that? Well, the important part here is that we connect and love on God and community here so we can connect and love on the community out there. So that's what we're doing with discipleship. And so I want to explain this because I realize I probably have not explained this as great as I could, or I just need to explain it better (laughs) Um, (laughs) in general. But we're doing a a thing called DNA of a Disciple. And some of you have already filled out these cards. And for those of you who filled out these cards, you're going to get a a call this week placing you with somebody else. For those of you who have not filled out a card, I encourage you to fill out one that's in the back table. And what this is, is when you fill this out, is we're going to put you together one-on-one to one-on-three at the most, um, people together, and we're going to have you guys to go over uh, just getting to know each other the first session. We're asking you to meet five times, just five. It's not bad. You can meet virtually, you can meet in person, whatever you feel most comfortable with. We're asking you to meet five times. The first time is just to get to know one another. Because I've, I've always realized you can't do discipleship with somebody you don't really know. Hey, Josh, I'm, you know we're going to talk about the Bible together. I don't care who you are. I don't care what you're going through, but we're just going to talk about the Bible. Like, what is that? You know, that doesn't show that I'm actually caring for somebody, and that we're never going to go deep in each other's lives. We're never going to be really having that talk. So the first one is just, hey, let's just get to know each other. That's all it is. And some of you guys have already done this, which is great. But for those of you who haven't, I want to encourage you in this. So that's that first part. The second one part, the, the, the second parts of it is a four-week session. It's just a four weeks going on one chapter each on a book um, that was written out there. We're giving you for free. We'll give it to you online. And you just go through these chapters. Each week, you go through a different chapter. Now, the chapters have a lot in them. It's not like it's a you know, five-page read. I mean, it's good stuff. But we're going to go through those different chapters, and we want you to go through those together. Now, the important part is that you learn from one another. One person doesn't come here and say, well, hey, you know what? I'm the expert, and you're the, the newbie, so you're going to listen to me. You know, that's not how it works. You know, the Bible talks about iron sharpening iron. We work together. We help each other. And so we come together, and we start to say, hey, well, what did you get out of this? What did I get out of this? And that's great. And then you start to pray together at the end of it, and you start to know each other's prayer requests. And after those five weeks, it's not like you say, well, hey, that was good. I, I got to know you then, and I'm, I'm done with you. Now, that starts a great relationship that you can hopefully pray with each other at other times. And you, know, and you have that person that you're now close with. You bring that unity together. Because we're never called to be isolationists in a church. Why? Jesus said he didn't want them to be one, as you and I are one. And this is a great way for us to be one, to be unified with each other, but with it not seeming overwhelming. And why it also working around your schedule. That's why on the card you'll see it says, what are the best times for you? Because some people can meet on a Friday, some people can meet on a Thursday, you know, all different times, depending on your schedule. You can meet virtually, you can meet in person. Again, that all depends on your guys' schedule. So I want to encourage you at the end to fill that out. That after that, in about March-ish, April-ish, something like that, sometime in the spring, uh, we're looking at doing a Holy Spirit retreat, a retreat just focusing on the Holy Spirit. And what we want to do is there's a lot of different stuff that's been talked about the Holy Spirit for a long time, a lot of bad information, a lot of weird information, a lot of stuff all the way around. We just want to look and say, this is what the Bible says. We want to come together and say, God, we want to see what you have. You know, because one thing that you read about in Acts often is he says that they were refilled. They were refilled. They, kept, they had the Holy Spirit continue to move in their lives. It wasn't just a one-time thing. You had the Holy Spirit come in your life the moment you say, I'm following God. But he says there is more that the Holy Spirit has for us. And we want us all to come together and to get to know about this, to have those conversations, to ask questions. These are good things. These are good things. So we're going to have a whole retreat. We're going to have just 24 hours from a Friday, um, Friday night to a Saturday night. Well, like Friday afternoon to a Saturday afternoon. Um, we're going to be down in Frankfurt and just having a retreat where we're getting away from everything and we can just have those talks and come together. So those are the big things that we're looking at doing this next week as far as coming to be discipled. But the other thing that we're going to be challenging people to do when it comes to the vision is part of being discipled and saying, well, I'm one as, as you are one. Again, look at this phrase that we have here, to connect and love on God and community here, so we can connect and love on the community out there. Well, we also want everybody connected here with a ministry. And what do I mean by, by a ministry? Because that can seem very overwhelming, kind of like we said last week when we said you're ordained to be a priest. You'd be like, oh, you know. Like what it, well, a ministry could be, hey, I could be someone who can greet people at the door. That's a great ministry. If someone has a really loving personality and stuff like that, and you agree, that's awesome. That's a great ministry. That might be where you start. Or maybe you just say, hey, I like kids. Great, Graciela, would love to talk to you. Great training on, on Wednesday. You know, and maybe that's where, where God's like leading you. Or maybe you're saying, like, because, again, we don't know everybody here. Maybe you can play an instrument, you can sing, and, you know, you want to talk to Pastor Vanessa, or you can help out with tech. All the different stuff. Everybody can do something together as one. 
Everyone can do that. Because when we're all moving together as one, then we're able to do more things together outside. Because the more I've seen this, and I've seen that I grew up in church until I walked away from God, uh, but I grew up in church, and the more I saw people plugged into the church, the more I saw those people growing in God, and the more I saw God doing great things in their life. And so I'm not just saying this like, hey, we have a bunch of openings, we need you to fill them. All right? That's not what I'm trying to say. What I'm saying is God has so much more for us. We want you to be a part of it. God has something great for you. So as Pastor Vanessa comes up right now, I'm going to have us all stand. And how I originally wanted to end this uh, was we were going to anoint and pray over everybody individually, but everything that's going on right now, honestly, we, we can't really do that, unfortunately. And so what I am going to do is I'm just going to pray over all of you, that God would help you out, that God would guide you, that he would anoint you just where you're at right now. That we would find time this year to say, you know what, I want to learn more about God so I can love him more. That's, that's my prayer for myself. There's never a level where you say, hey, I've made it. No, until I see Jesus face to face, <laughs> that's, when, that's when I've made it. That's when we've all made it. So I want to pray that over you, that you would learn to love God more. You would see that. I want to also pray that you would live in and love on others. We won't be sellouts, we won't be copying out, we won't be shouting out or speaking out, sorry. We won't be shutting people out and just trying to do ourselves, but we'll really be reaching out. That, that will be our mentality. And that's going to look different for everyone. As we said last week, you all have different spheres of influence. God has put you in the place that he's put you in so you could be an influence to other people, that you could say things to different people and speak into people's lives that no one else can. But I want to encourage you to look into that to see what God has for you. And the last part that you would get that disciple, to get that unity. For us as a church, we need to have the unity here so we could do more out there. We just need it. And that was Jesus' prayer for us. May they be unified this much with God as, as God was with Jesus. May they have that same kind of unity where we're together. Okay, not uniformity. We're all going to be different. But that unity where we come together. And however God is laying on your heart of what that looks like, I want to encourage you, allow God just to speak that into your life this next week. I want to encourage you to look at these two passages Psalm 73 and John 12, uh, John 17, this next week on your own. And just allow God to speak to your heart. Now I'm to see what needs to happen. I want to pray over you today. God, we are so grateful. God, for those who are able to come, whether it be online or in person, God, we are grateful for your love and your heart for them. God, I pray right now this year, unlike any other years of any of our lives before, God, we'll really push to get to know you more. Because the more we learn about you, the more we will love you. God, and whether that means learning how to read your word on our own daily, whether that means having a prayer time that's not just saying, here are my needs and that's it, but really going deeper. Whether it's having that personal praise time with you every day. God, whether we're able to come here on, on Wednesdays and Sundays, God, and, and just being soaked in to seeing who you are through praise and through your word and through prayer. God, I pray that you will help us to have that desire. That this would be our vision to say that we want to end 2022 closer to you than we have ever been. God, we pray as well for those around us that we will live with them. God, may we go outside of ourselves and get to know our neighbors, get to know our coworkers. God, we know that people have been living in fear for almost two years. Have even gained to know anybody or even been around anybody, but we also know that with this pandemic, there's also been a pandemic of loneliness like the world has never seen. And God, that people need to have that connection. You made us social creatures. Even the most introverted person on the planet was made to be a social creature. So God, I pray that you would help us to reach out for those who are, who are lonely and lost. We won't be apathetic about it and say it's somebody else's job to reach out. That God, we won't just be looking at our own selves saying we're just taking care of ourselves. God, that we won't just speak out to something. God, that you will help us to reach out in a real way. And we know you are a creative God. It's going to look different for all of us. But I pray that you allow us to take your model of having that relationship with people first. Begin to know them. 
and then being able to speak into their life. I pray you would guide us in that way. God, we pray as well for this discipleship. God, I pray a special anointing on every single person. God, you'll allow them to realize that they are a part of your body. God, that each one of them is, is God, is, is, is intricate and critical to what you're wanting to do in this church and outside of this church. God, allow us to come together to get to know more of you through the DNA of a disciple. God, allow us to get to know more of who you are and to be empowered even more. God, we need more and more of your power every single day. God, I pray that you'll allow that retreat just to be blessed. I'm praying about that ahead of time. God, we pray as well. God, you'll help us as we're reaching out in new ways to help out in different areas around the church. God, allow us to do this with joy. God, that's what you said. You said your word brings joy. It's not bringing condemnation or bringing guilt. It brings joy. So we pray that we would have it in that same spirit. God, that when we have all the different things planned for the community and outreaches and everything else that we're going to be doing this next year, that we'll be doing that with joy as well. I mean, this is what you call for us. Why? Because you're with us. You are with us. We're unified. We're one with you. And we're grateful for that. God, we pray that you'll help us to share who you are, to share that great love, that great truth, in great ways to a world that needs to know you desperately. We thank you for all you're doing and all you are. In Jesus Christ's name, amen. Well, God bless you. If you would like to help out again with the kids there, Graciela Garcia is downstairs. Please talk to her afterwards. Um, We'd love to see you guys on Wednesday. For those who aren't helping out with the kids, we'll be meeting upstairs. So for those who used to come on Tuesday, we met downstairs. We'll meet upstairs on Wednesday. Keep saying Tuesday, Wednesday, Wednesday. Uh, we'll meet upstairs on Wednesday. Uh, but definitely check that out. God bless you. If you didn't get a shirt yet, please feel free. Come down and grab one. God bless you all. Say hi to one another. <laughs>